Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Christ is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Can we all say that together? Say it with me tonight. Say all things were created through him and for him. And verse 17 says, He is before all things. And in Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He may have the preeminence, that He in all things may be number one, first. So tonight we want to look at the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Here we see in this portion of scripture that we just read, five powerful statements. Number one, all things were created by Christ. Number two, all things were created for Christ. Number three, all things revolve around Him. Number four, He is the reason for the very existence of all things. The entire universe exists for Him, exists because of Him, exists by Him. He holds it all together. So tonight I want to say that you were created for Christ and by Christ. And He is the reason for your existence. And He holds all things together in your life. The universe is made up of atoms, neutrons, and protons. And every atom is moving. The chair you're sitting on, the pulpit, your physical body, my physical body, there's cells and atoms and protons and neutrons moving. But He's the one who holds it together. I'm here to tell you without Him there is no gravity. Without Him, there is no sunrise or sunset. Without Him, there are no stars. Without Him, there is no man. Without Him, there is no light. He created it all. It all was created for Him, and He holds it all together. And if that is who He is and how powerful He is, then how many of you know nothing shall be impossible for you and for me? For we are in Him, and He is in us. So he holds everything together. He holds everything in place. Now the name of Jesus is not just given to us for our needs to be met. The name of Jesus is not just given for you and for me to pray in so that we can have our needs met. That name has been given to you, to me, to the body of Christ. To meet the needs of people around us through that name to release the power of the kingdom. So Jesus became flesh. He became a man. He became human so that he could destroy the devil as a man. Philippians chapter 2, and it's very important to look at all these verses. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 6 says, that Christ, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the Bible says that he earned this name. He inherited this name. He received this name. This name was there in all eternity before he was born. That name existed. But that name could only be given to the one that could be born the way he was. That could live and die and be raised from the dead the way he was. And when he accomplished that, the Father exalted him and gave him the name that was reserved for the one that would defeat hell, death, the grave, Satan, and that would redeem mankind. And the Father gave that name to him. He earned that name. He didn't get that name just for nothing. It wasn't just for free. It wasn't cheap. He got that name by earning it, by humbling himself, by becoming a man, and by dying on the cross, and by going into hell, and by destroying Satan, and by releasing the prisoners, and by setting the captives free. He brought that name of honor to himself. The Father gave it to him. He earned it. And now in heaven, he has the highest name. And now on earth, he has the highest name. And even under the earth, he has the highest name. In all three worlds, there is no name that is more powerful, that is greater, that is higher than the name of Jesus. You can go into heaven. You you can go anywhere on earth or under the earth. That name is a powerful name. That name is the name above all other names. And every knee must bow before that name. Somebody shout Jesus. He didn't get a name. He got the name. He didn't get a name. You and I have a name. But he got the name. There was only one name like this name. This name was reserved. This name is the highest honor. This name is the highest name. There's no greater power or authority than this name. And the Father gave it to him. He earned it and he carries that name. And this name has power in this world. In the world to come. This name has power in heaven. It has power here on earth. And it has power even under the earth. That's why in the name of Jesus, when you pray, heaven responds. That's why in the name of Jesus, when you speak on earth, things move. That's why in the name of Jesus, when you command spirits to go, they obey. Because that name has power and authority in all dimensions and realms. Would you give that name some praise and glory? The name of Jesus. So the reason Jesus conquered death and paid the price that he did to earn and inherit this name was so that he could give it to the church. So that the church could have power and authority in his name to bring to pass God's purpose in the earth. In Matthew 28, 18, he said, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. He did not say that before his death, burial, and resurrection. He, he did not say that. He did not say all authority is mine. He was only given it after his death. After his burial, after his resurrection, because he had to fight for it. He had to earn it. He had to conquer Satan, death, hell, and the grave. That is the good news of the gospel, is that all authority is his in heaven and in earth. I want to ask you a question. If Jesus has all authority, then how much authority does the devil have? If Jesus has all authority, how much authority does sickness have? If Jesus has all authority, how much authority do the princes and the powers have? 
They have as much authority as we give them, but they have no authority. He has all authority. And in the Greek language, all means all. So somebody shout all. Would you just tell three people around you, he has all authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if Jesus has all authority, then why doesn't he go and make disciples of all nations? If he has all authority, why doesn't he make people come and serve him and save them and heal them and set them free? Because he gave his name to his church. And he said, I am going to the Father, and I'm going to sit down at the Father's right hand because I've already defeated, destroyed, conquered Satan. Now you go. I give you my name. And wherever you go in my name, you will have authority and power to do what I've accomplished. Come on, somebody give him praise. So who must make disciples? We must. Who must heal the sick? We must. Who must drive out demons? We must. Who must love people? We have to. Who must feed people? We have to. He's not going to do it. He gave us the authority in his name. And he said, you're my disciples. You're my body. Now you go do it. But Lord, how? Use my name. If you use my name, then all the authority and power that I have will be yours. It's in my name. Just use my name. Speak my name. Decree my name. Go into the areas where there's no food and feed them in my name. Speak to poverty in my name. Go where people are dying of AIDS and cancer and speak to the disease in my name. Go into the territories where there's drug infested areas and speak my name. And I will manifest my power somebody shout Jesus Jesus. hallelujah all that Jesus is and owns is ours now how do we appropriate how do we place a demand how do we take hold of that power John chapter 16 And verse 16 says, John chapter 16. Let's rather read. He says in verse 16, I'm going away. I'm going to the Father. But look at verse 23. He says, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, we heard this morning, I tell you the truth. Whatever you ask the Father in my name. He will give you. Oh, hallelujah. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. That your joy may be full. The joy is hitting me right now. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. How many of you know unhappy, miserable, depressed Christians are people that don't use the name, are people that don't understand the name, are people that don't ask what they want to in His name, they don't get answers. But if you use His name, if you understand the power is in His name, and if you pray in His name, you'll get whatever you ask the Father. Your prayers will be answered. And when your prayers are answered, I say when your prayers are answered, You don't drag your feet around anymore. When your prayers are answered, nobody has to beg you to come to church. When your prayers are answered, how many of you know you have joy and you have fullness? Oh my God. Somebody give him a praise for the power of his name. Is your joy full tonight? Would you look at three people around you and just say, have some joy tonight. (laughs) 
<laughs> Whew, glory. I'm happy. I'm happy because my, I see my prayers are answered. I'm happy because I prayed about something. He heard me and he answered it. And the answer had nothing to do with me. It was in spite of me. I wasn't even a part of the equation. It was because of the name that I was using when I was praying. So my joy is full because my destiny, your destiny, is not in the hands of this government, of this world, of the economist, of the political parties. It's in the hands of the name and the power of the Son of the living God. So when you pray in his name, in fact, if I read it correctly here, he said, whatever you ask, that Greek word for whatever there is, whatever, It's whatever, it's anything, it's whatever you can think of, whatever it is. Come on, somebody. So how many of you know you don't have to be afraid? You don't have to fear? You don't have to say who is going to help me out of this mess? You can just go to the Father in His name and put your bills before the Father and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for a provision. Oh, I need about a hundred people to give God praise with some joy for the power of the name of Jesus. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you raise your hand with me and say this? has nothing to do with me. The answer has nothing to do with me, with how I feel. My answer from God, the Father, is because of the name of Jesus, not by my earning it, but because Jesus earned it. Because Jesus earned it. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't earn the answers. Jesus earned it. And because Jesus did it, the Father says, I will answer your prayer because of my Son. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If I give Eugene a check tonight of 10,000 rand and I make it out to him and I sign it my name my signature is on the check 10,000 rand he takes it to the bank and he puts the check there how many of you know that teller doesn't interrogate him that teller doesn't go through who are you where are you from where did you get this who is this he's got the check and he's got my name on it. So the name on the check, come on somebody, guarantees that it's his. And how many of you know, I don't need to be present with him at the bank for him to make the withdrawal because he's got my name. So even if I'm not there, he can withdraw it. It belongs to him by just using my name. I'm here to tell you, you have the name. You can use the name. You can make a withdrawal in the name. And in his name, they shall lay their hands upon the sick. And they shall recover. And in my name, they shall cast out devils and speak with new tongues, and no deadly thing shall harm them. My God. Oh, the signs will follow those who believe in my name. The reason there's no signs is because people don't know the name. They hear about it. They can even listen to it. They can mention it. But it's nothing more than what people in the world are doing. 
They talk about Jesus too. They use his name. They say his name. But there's no power in it. They have no revelation of it. But I'm here to tell you, you have a revelation. That that name has authority, has power. God has exalted that name. It's the name above all names. And you can use it. And the Father will answer you. Can you say amen tonight? So the Lord Jesus and the church are one. John 17 verse 20 says, Jesus is praying, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, oh, hallelujah, I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know you've sent me and have loved them as you've loved me. He is saying, I'm one with my people. I'm one with my church. I'm one with my body. I am in them. So tonight I want to say to you, you are one with Him. That's the only way the world will believe in Him is when they see believers walking in unity with Him. And the glory that the Father gave Him, He gave to the church. That glory is His name. Say it with me. Say, we are one with Christ. Say, we can use His name. Say this, we are His body. Hallelujah. I want to close. Dylan, if you would come, please. Acts, Acts, the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9 and verse 32. Now it came to pass as Peter went through all parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas... Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise. Make your bed. Then he arose immediately. So all who dwelt at Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. So here we see that Peter didn't pray for him. He simply used the name. Peter used the name of Jesus freely. Peter didn't wait for something to stir him up. Peter didn't wait for a crowd. He didn't wait for an atmosphere. He didn't wait for music. He didn't wait for nothing. He saw a man bedridden, and he said in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. He used that name freely. It's time for the body of Christ to use that name. Too many preachers are preaching about God. You don't hear once where they say the name Jesus. But in this church and in our preaching, you will hear Jesus from the beginning to the end because the power is in the name shout it band if you would come the name Jesus walk over to three people and say Jesus 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 hallelujah Peter used that name freely in fact he used it as if it was his to use he used it like it belonged to him he used it like I can use it in the name of Jesus get up be healed How many of you will start using the name freely? How many of you will start using the name like you can use it? And the most awesome thing is that when he used the name, Jesus manifested himself. And Aeneas was healed because Peter dared to use his name. How many of you know the name of Jesus changes atmospheres? How many of you know the name of Jesus either causes a revival or a riot? How many of you know the name of Jesus is the only name they use to curse? How many of you know the name of Jesus is the only name they try to disgrace? How many of you know the name of Jesus, wherever you use that name, demons start getting uncomfortable. Demons start getting frustrated. I'm here to tell you tonight, it's because there's power. I'm so glad that you were able to watch this program and connect with this word. And now, in this moment, the Holy Spirit 
is moving upon you. I know something has awakened inside of you. Something has been stirred up on the inside of you. So I want to ask you to open your heart. There where you are. I'm going to pray for you now and release this anointing upon you. In Jesus' name, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that there will be an outpouring upon this one watching. I pray that there will be an outpouring of the presence and the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in a tangible way. Pour out that manifestation of kavot, the glory, the weight of the presence of God upon this individual, upon their family, upon every area and part of their lives. And in Jesus' name, I prophesy over you now that from this day, you will have a new passion. You'll have a new zeal. I sense right now there are some of you that have burnt out. Some of you, you feel like you've lost your passion. Some of you feel like, like all hope is gone. You know, it, it just feels like you don't have motivation or vision for the future. I prophesy to you now that that is changing. A new season, a new beginning, a new chapter unfolds in your life in Jesus' name. And from this moment, you are going to be a God chaser, a God pursuer. That's the purpose, the desire, the passion, the destiny of your life from this moment forth in Jesus' name. I stir it up in you. I awaken it up in you. And you will be known for a person that had an intimate relationship with God face to face. So I release this dimension, this destiny, this passion upon your life. And I loose you from everything that would hold you back. I loose you from past disappointments, past setbacks, burdens, bondages. I command every spirit that would hinder and oppose you from pursuing God. I command that spirit, that oppression to go now in Jesus Christ's name. I release upon you the anointing, the spirit, the passion of a God chaser. There it is. It is your portion right now in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into Prophetic Encounter. If you have been touched by this word, we would love to hear from you. You can send your praise reports and prayer requests to Prophetic Encounter at rwc.org.za. You can follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook, where you'll be able to stay up to date with upcoming events. Whenever you are in the city, we would love for you to join us at one of our services. Our service times are 8.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. We are located at number 10, Gemini Street, Brackenfell, Cape Town. Tune in next time for Prophetic Encounter.